everyone, it is Dennis Wood from Cinevate here for another uh, Talking Head video university segment from Cinevate. And we are today uh, going to talk about the Atlas 10 FLT. Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of buzz online, and certainly one of our most successful product launches in the history of Cinevate was the Atlas 10. And this is the Atlas 10 uh, right here, which in its 36 inch length, you can see it's considerably larger and heavier than the Atlas 10 FLT. If you're interested in sort of a real good demonstration of these products in the field, check out Cinevate.com slash Atlas 10. So it's Cinevate.com slash Atlas 10. And we've shot a really cool climbing video using this product, which you can see is pretty much identical to the smaller product. Um, this one weighs in at about five kilograms, so around 12 pounds. This one, the Atlas 10 FLT, will fit uh, into a suitcase, a standard suitcase. And it weighs about 2.5 kilograms, so just over, uh, let's say, about five and a half, six pounds. Smaller, uh, still takes a lot of weight. You can see we have a D3S on here, um, but these, these rail systems are incredibly strong. So I could stand on that Atlas 10, and we're not going to talk about how much I weigh, but let's just say it's over 200 pounds. So a lot of people are looking to get movement, and not a lot of movement, into their shots, and they need a slider that's very smooth, quiet, and reliable, and that's what this is. It's fully ball bearing. Uh, there's stainless steel parts, like I said, brass used everywhere, anodized aluminum on the end, and these um, all-terrain legs, which are kind of cool. So if I was to swing this thing around and just show you that, you'll see that the there's a fastener here that indexes to the leg in different positions, so I can rapidly and reliably adjust these. And there's a micro adjust feature here that allows us to uh, just fine-tune the height if we need to. We have the ability to both change the position of the leg and micro adjust the feet. These are non-scratching, uh, non-marking, very very high quality material. The core is stainless steel so it's a very reliable part. So there you go. There is the Atlas 10 FLT in its center mount mode and what I can do now is I'm going to go ahead and remove this from the uh, head. You can see that the quick release plate can just stay here. Uh, it's uh, mounted to our center point and our tripod mount plate has two 3 8 holes and a quarter 20 so depending on the type of uh, plate if you look at this plate you'll see that we have two of the 3 8 fasteners that are provided with these uh, Manfrotto 504 sliding plates um, and this is a great scenario because we've got two attachment points this plate can't twist and it's not going to move so uh, very quickly now I can slide this into the head and, you know, what I would tell you about the head is that you want to uh, basically use the heaviest, stiffest head you can afford. And uh, the reason is, is because when you get this in vertical mode, you're going to be, it's going to be pretty easy to torque the system. So uh, with a setup like this, and you can see I have it locked off, I have the D3S. Um, if I just swivel this around, you can see that I'm able to view the LCD here. So I can compose my shot. So if, for example, you just wanted to get some height and in this case, we're going to be out of frame if I raise this up too much. But uh, if I basically went right up to the top of this, let's say your sticks have about a, a five to six foot elevation. Well, then you're going to be able to get uh, up quite a bit higher and just get a shot uh, with at elevation. But the big thing here is that you've got a very nice, smooth, controlled movement vertically, which is pretty impossible to do handheld. And in this sense, I am taking up all the weight uh, myself. And... If I want to uh, even make this smoother, I can counterbalance because uh, we sell the Atlas 10 FLT in a counterbalance mode, just like its big brother, the Atlas 10. So we'll just do a quick switcheroo here and show you um, how the Atlas 10 looks with the counterbalance. What we've done now is we have added essentially uh, another slider, if you like, to the to the back of the Atlas 10 FLT. It's the same system as you'd see in the Atlas 10, just everything smaller and lighter. So what we're able to do now, and I'm just going to rotate this around so you can see. Oh, let's unlock here. Um, you can see the exposed 3 8 and you'll notice that the bottom of the ball head, a lot of tripod heads as well, will have this 3 8 thread. So really it's just a matter of locking this uh, head down and threading it on. So um, the other thing that we like to, we have in our catalog that's a very cool piece, it's a half ball. Um, so what it does, is it screws on here and it gives you a ball leveler essentially that you can put uh, a ball head or a tripod head allows you to level it just like a hundred millimeter ball. So we're going to go ahead and, and pop this D3S Nikon into play. 
like so. And we'll make sure it's locked because it's kind of an expensive camera to be dropping. And we'll rotate it back up into sort of a shoot position. I'll rotate it a bit this way so I can see the LCD back there. You can see things are tight. Um, what I have now is I have the Atlas 10 FLT in lock off mode. Notice here, if I rotate around, we have a break and a break. So both the counter and the camera itself can be uh, locked. Now let me just rotate the system and uh, we'll just show you how this counterbalance is kind of set up. You can see we've got some short carbon rails and the counterbalance itself is uh, the same one that we use on our DSLR rig. It's anodized, hard anodized aluminum um, and you can fill it. So you can put water in it. I mean, it's not water, a uh, water bottle rather. You can put lead in it, uh, sand, whatever you have on hand. What I'm gonna do here is just drop the counterbalance all the way down because I don't want it to contact here. And we will uh, first always release the brake that's on the counterbalance. And now I'm gonna release the brake on the camera itself. You can see that there's very, very little effort being required here because I've got weight on the back now to actually counterbalance this thing. So um, even if there wasn't a counterbalance in here, it's actually gonna be easier for me to, for example, um, if I wanna do a vertical uh, jib shot, I can do basically a shot that kind of looks like this. It's fairly smooth and that's moving as I go up. And again, there is no weight in here right now. I'm just basically doing this all by hand. And definitely on the way down, you're gonna find it's gonna be very, very easy now because I don't have to lift anything. So there you go. That's the Atlas 10 FLT in its vertical mode. What I'm gonna do is reposition the camera here and we'll put it into sort of that escalator mode um, if you want to call it that. And let's make sure we snug it up so I don't get knocked in the head. With the all-terrain legs on here against, again, the imaginary wall, um, if I tilt it back like so, essentially what I have now is I have it supported at the top and I'm able to get my escalator shot, if you like, basically in this angle. So it's a sneaky way in the field because there's always gonna be a wall close by to get a really stable vertical shot. Even um, just a slight decline or a slight incline, as long as you can get the legs onto the wall, you're golden. So there you go. Let's get this back up here. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, this is gonna be a great tool for people who do a lot of travel and need a very light slider, quick to deploy, very high build quality. So enjoy, I'm, well, I'm absolutely convinced you will see a lifetime of a good use from this part.